I have discussed these kinds of housing investments in my previous videos. The ones where you flip houses and call yourself a house flipper. Well, what exactly is house flipping? You may be asking yourself. You buy a property, usually below market value, and sell it, or the aim is to sell it for a higher price. And that's about it. Oh, if you can give it a makeover, even better. Seems easy enough, doesn't it? Buy a house, a few fixes here and there, put it up for sale on the market, and voila, quick money. What's not to like? You probably have seen those shows where good-looking and well-dressed property investors uh, make the process seem so swift, slick, profitable, and even sometimes, dare I say, entertaining. But it's not so easy. And there are common pitfalls that many people tend to make when flipping properties and attempting to make a profit. And yes, profit is an important word. Now let's go through some of the mistakes. Common mistake number one, zero plans to get funding. Before you go looking for a house or buying a house, thinking it will sell well, please make sure that you have the right amount of money to go through with the plan that you have created for yourself. And having a plan is important, by the way. You need a plan for the plan. A plan within a plan. Dream within a dream. Huh. I'm impressed. Perhaps you are one of the lucky ones and have the cash for the initial purchase of the house just lying around somewhere, in a jar, under your bed, wherever your hiding place is. The thing is, you will still need to consider how you will pay for the renovation. Taking a loan is an option for most people and there are plenty of options to choose from in terms of uh, loans. You can go for a well-known method, uh, which is to take out a bridging loan, uh, because obviously, generally speaking, uh, property flips uh, are very short and should be short. If you're taking too long on them, then you're not doing them properly or you've got a major problem. And it's sometimes called a buy to sell uh, funding option. Through this type of arrangement, you can accomplish the task of buying a property and then renovating it. You can pay it back once you've sold a property or you can refinance and obviously pay off that loan and then have a mortgage. Another option is a secured loan. And of course, if you get a bridging loan, that will also be secured uh, by way of uh, an asset and a personal guarantee too. You can secure um, a loan against a property you already have, which you can then pay off in monthly installments. But this does come with a risk. You can end up losing your property if you are unable to keep up with the repayments. So repaying a loan is incredibly important which I'm sure you understand anyway. Now, if you're looking for a smaller loan, then you could uh, go for an unsecured loan. And this usually works when uh, you already have most of the cash you need uh, in your back pocket or wherever you've hidden it, uh, but you need some more money to complete the mission. Before you decide on which type of funding you're going to go for, make sure you have an action plan on how you're going to repay the debt. Do not, any under circumstances, take a loan that you cannot repay. That's not good for your financial health or for your personal health or for your credit rating, among other things. I know I sound like a broken record, but talk to a finance expert uh, and they can discuss with you all the different options available to you. I've already covered two or three very quickly for you. Mistake number two, no research whatsoever. In the wise words of Sherlock Holmes, do your research. I'm not a psychopath, Anderson. I'm a high-functioning sociopath. Do your research. Thoroughly inspect, survey, stalk, do whatever you have to do, but go through all aspects of the property as well as the market. It's going to serve you well. And of course, I'm talking about the one that you're planning on selling. And before uh, finishing your renovations, you should do some spying and find out what the local buyers are looking for in a house so you can meet that particular demand and criteria. Once you figure that out, it's going to be easier for you to flip that house effectively because you're going to give people what they want. So it's a good idea to check values of houses in the local area where you're buying a property to flip. This way you can get an idea of how much profit you ought to make and you can obviously work towards that. 
And I always start with the end in mind and then work back backwards, re reverse engineer to make sure that the budget works and the numbers work. Because if you don't budget in flipping, you might be in a lot of trouble. So you make sure you have a budget for your renovation plan. Now here's another obvious factor for you to consider, and I am morally obligated to mention it. See that the area is that the one where people want to live in. Sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't actually consider this. Imagine investing time and money and effort and energy and enthusiasm into a property and finding out that the buyer you had in mind does not want to live in such a place or such an area. And no one wants that, but once you've spent all your money, it's a bit too late to be thinking about that. So you've got to do this up front. Common mistake number three, paying too much for a property. So I suggest you go and visit uh, lots of properties uh, and then decide which one works best for you and which one has the right margin and the right demand. And while you're at it, see that it has been appraised by a professional, especially if you're new to all of this. And if you're buying a property through an auction, this can be more challenging as it happens faster than a normal property sale. So again, make sure you have somebody who's experienced, who's a mentor or an advisor who can guide you in the right direction. And sometimes, obviously, if you've seen the property late and it's going to auction, you may not get a chance to view it. I strongly suggest you view a property uh, before you bid on it at auction. It's important that you're fully aware of all the flaws and faults uh, that the property has. This way, you know for sure that the deal you are about to make is not going to blow up in your face. Mistake number four, trying to do everything yourself. Now we're all guilty of this, I've done this in the past, I'm sure you have too at some point. Uh, but what do I always tell you? Seek professional help. And I make no apology for that, I think it's incredibly important uh, that you use professionals to help and guide you because they are experts in their field for a particular reason. They know what they're talking about. So do not go on a solo mission and get yourself into financial trouble. This is real life, not a movie. Although I have made one too many references of fictional characters here already. And I'm not going to apologize for that either. I admit, that one is on me. Yes, there is a cost to having experienced professionals on your side. But in the long run, it's going to save you both time and money, I assure you that. And I'm talking from experience, by the way, of having uh, engaged and instructed professionals. Remember that to get the repairs and upgrades that involve uh, power, gas, you need a certified uh, professional to, to do the work. Remember to get repairs done, especially the upgrades, uh, especially if you've got power and gas, you need proper you need proper you need proper professionals who are qualified to do that job. If you fail to do this, you'll be breaking the law and putting people's lives at risk and in danger. And you don't want to do that because that has major consequences. It's better to hire professionals if you are looking to decorate and do some light or heavy renovations uh, than trying to do the work yourself because they know what they're doing. They'll do it quicker to a better standard. Uh, and then you can go in, get out, sell the property and make your profit. But of course, it's going to cost you more than doing it yourself, but it's going to be a better job and that's going to show when the property is done. And of course, if you've got experience, uh, and let's say you're a painter, then you can do it yourself because you've got the experience and the expertise. So it depends on your, obviously your personal capabilities, your finances, what experience you have, how much time you have, and what you can do, but don't give things a go. If you're a proper professional property investor, then you're going to engage other professionals to do the work that they are good at and you're not so good at. Mistake number five, selling at the wrong price. Now, if you're new to the world of property flipping, you will have somewhat of a hard time trying to put a price tag on a house because you're new to it. Consider the amount that you've spent on the property and the market situation at the time of when you're selling and don't get desperate to sell uh, just because the property's been on the market for four, five, six weeks. Uh, sometimes you just gotta be patient in property. In fact, quite often you will be patient in property, just like anything else in life. 
Uh, now, if you have a price that's too high and it's not going to sell, and it's probably on the market for too long, uh, people aren't going to be interested in it. Then you drop the price. If this gets complicated, uh, put a price tag uh, by speaking to a professional uh, and make sure, obviously, the margins work, the numbers work, uh, and of course, you make a profit because that's the business that you're in. Now, to avoid making these mistakes, work with an estate agent uh, who can help you get the price right. And that is all I have on property flipping mistakes for you today. Hope you learned at least one new thing or at least going to help you to think about things slightly differently. Until next time, with more ways to invest wisely in the world of property. Until next time, with more ways to invest wisely in the world of property and property business. Leave a comment down below and see you next time.